In this video, we will discuss one of the most important stages in creating realistic images, lightning setup. So, what is the usual workflow? First, you need to set up the general fill light. Next, if necessary, add additional light sources or fakes to achieve depth. Depending on the nature of the required lightning, we may or may not add sunlight. And after the primary natural lighting is ready, we proceed to set up artificial light sources. We will sequentially go through each stage using reference examples. So, the first thing we do is set up natural lighting. We set up the fill light, which can be an ordinary white card. What should be considered immediately is the overall tone of the interior. Here we have dark and light interiors, with roughly the same openings. The incoming light in both interiors is the same, but it is distributed differently inside the room. Dark walls absorb part of the light and reflect less than lighter walls. So in a dark interior, with the same amount of light coming in, it will be darker. For example, if I paint the walls of this interior in Photoshop, the result will not be correct. You cannot change the color of the walls and leave the rest of the space unchanged. The walls become darker, absorbing some light and therefore, the remaining space will also get less light and become darker. Something like this. Shadows here should also become darker, and carpet should not stand out as much. Interiors become similar to each other. Let's move on. The character of the received light and shadows from the fill light through the window is influenced by the size of the window opening. The larger the window, the more light comes in, and the softer the shadows become. And the smaller the window, the sharper the shadows become. Additionally, the smaller the window, the more overexposed it will be. If we focus on the window to capture the image, the interior will become darker. Here, the interior is not as bright compared to these references. Even here, most likely the photo from the window is just photoshopped on another one, because the background outside should be even lighter. If we look at this reference, we see large windows and a lot of soft fill light, the shadows are blurry. But it's important to note that the closer the object is to the light source, the sharper its shadows become. And the farther it is, the more blurred they become. Relatively sharp, more blurred, and even more blurred. Here, the shadows are very soft. The next topic is... Depth. We have placed a white HDRI card in our interior. It created even fill light. The next thing to do is to break the image into specific plans. Let's say in this picture we have a foreground and a background, a bright room. The foreground is darker, the background is lighter. And in the light background, the darkest object stands out, the sofa, and it immediately attracts all the attention. The same logic applies here, a dark foreground and a light spot. Bright, dark space. Bright, and in the bright space, a dark picture. We immediately look at it. The same logic again. Dark foreground, then light chairs, then even brighter space with a sunbeam, and again a dark room. These examples are clear. The plan is set by light and shadow divided by volumes. Light volume 1, dark volume 2, and light again, volume 3. But this depth needs to be achieved with smaller objects too. For example, here we have one entire room, but we can also break it into plans. One dark plan, two light, and three again darker. If we set fill lightning, this part of the island could be dark. In this case, we need to take additional light source rectangle and light up the spot. 
Do not be afraid of additional light sources, because in interior photography, some areas are also specially lit. This is completely normal, and you should use it to your advantage. Look at this interior. The objects are in the same material, but we still read the volume well. We have a dark part, a light part, dark again, and light and dark. It's a good contrast, and that is visible. Let's move on. When we have not just one small window, but a large one, or several windows, double shadows can be cast from objects. For example, one shadow from this window and another shadow from that window. Such shadows are always beautiful. Looking specifically at this interior, how could the light be set here? We could have just placed a white HDRI card and be done with it. But this approach is not always enough, especially when we have many large windows from two or more sides. When we place the HDRI card, what could happen? The light could be too soft, and these shadows wouldn't be there. Also, if I later wanted to make a shot from the window to this table, it would likely be overexposed with the set exposure. So what can I do? I will place a white HDRI card, but reduce its intensity. I will take additional light sources rectangles and place them outside the windows. From this window, the light will be much stronger and more directed. I will definitely get this window and the volume will be red. Here, at the chair, this part will be lighter and gradually get darker. When I make a shot from the window, the overexposure will not be as much. I will still read the color and shadow because there will be more light from this side. We can also see the situation with two or more shadows on smaller objects. For example, from the chair or the core items. Like in this interior, there are likely two windows. The closer window casts a sharper shadow. The farther window casts a softer shadow. If we make a close-up or notice that objects are flat, we can light them up from the inside, preferably from the main light source. When lining up, we should pay attention to the received shadows and the sharpness of the edges. Remember, the closer the light source, the sharper the shadows, and the further the source, the more blurred they are. Next is the sun. And now, we have set the fill light, achieved depth with additional light sources if we need it. And now we can add the sun. The sun can cast a sharp or soft shadows, even very subtle ones. The sun should be handled carefully. It should be set to enhance the geometry, not break it. But there are interiors where there's a lot of sun. But here it hits almost evenly on a plain wall. Therefore, it's appropriate. It creates a beautiful pattern and doesn't break the geometry. Let's look at a few more examples of the sun. You can create a beautiful accent. Achieve depth. Here, the background is brighter and the foreground is darker. And beautifully present the area. Create interesting shadows. Shots always look great when the sun passes through foliage and casts such delicate shadows. With this option, you can bring more sun into the interior, as the foliage shadows will take a part of the general sunlight. Again, it's important to note that the closer the object, the sharper the shadows. The further, like the leaves, the more blurred. The window opening is sharper and the leaves are more blurred. Let's talk about Bloom. In Unreal, we often turn it off immediately because it bothers us. Bloom is rarely noticeable with large window openings. In the interior, you can see it mainly when the light goes through some small slit or narrow window opening. You cannot make out much because it's just bright. Here. The bloom is barely noticeable.
but when we have a narrow window opening, it becomes more visible. But most often than not, of course, we encounter bloom in artificial light sources. We talked about natural light, and only when we have it fully set up can we move on to artificial light. Artificial light with low lightning can act as an accent. That is, we have natural light with a fully balanced picture. Then we turn on an artificial light source, such as pendant lamp. And it becomes the accent. Moreover, when we have an accent, it is very important to monitor the composition. Here it is located in one third of the image. Which is considered good composition. Let's consider another example. Here, here, essentially the same story. We have artificial light serving as an accent, and it is also located in one third of the image. Often the client asks to show all the lights turned on, but it is necessary to understand that when we set up lightning, artificial light should not overpower the light from the window. So in such cases, we can turn on our spotlights, but make the light from them very small or adjust the backlight so that it looks harmonious with the full light and does not overpower it. Artificial light sources should always be darker. The combination of cold outdoor light and warm light always looks good. It's all about subconsciousness. We associate warm light with the light of a campfire, coziness and safety. And let's talk about nighttime lightning. There can be several scenarios, but in any case, we always have blue fill light from the window and an artificial light source, which in one case can be extenuated. We immediately pay attention to it. Even if all the light sources are turned on, like both the backlight, the built-in light and the floor lamp. The accent is still on one, but there is also a second approach, where the artificial light source is the fill light. Which option to choose depends on the task at hand. That's all, we have consistently covered each stage of lighting setup. In general, I want to say that there are no real clues or rules here. The lightning setup process is the most creative, artistic part of the project, so it is very important to have a good visual sense and pay attention to details. I wish everyone good results, subscribe to our channel and follow our socials. Have a nice one. Hope to see you again.